Hey everybody, this is Brad Bollier. I am the author of 12 Kings in Sharkai and the Winds of Kalakobo. And I'm happy to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about uh, writing, the business of writing, your career, how to handle it a little bit. Uh, I, was, I was, you know, pretty pleased when World Builders asked me to talk about it because I really like talking about writing and it's, and it's fun to talk about the journey a little bit. Um, before I get started, I, I wanted to say thanks to all of you out there who chip in every year uh, sometimes more than a year now uh, with all the things that World Builders is doing. So thank you all for chipping in and making World Builders what it is. It's a really great uh, thing and I'm glad to see it doing so well and growing over the years. So um, in terms of advice, I think you'll hear some commonalities and I'm, I'm going to try to avoid those to a degree. Uh, you'll hear things like uh, read a lot and write a lot. Uh, and that's great advice as far as it goes. Uh, I think those are absolute uh, requirements for being a writer. Uh, and hopefully you've gotten there already. Hopefully you are reading a lot and reading uh, widely, reading deeply as well. Um, I'm going to try to focus on three different things. And we, we talk about beginnings, middles, and ends in writing. And so these focus a little bit on those concepts, those themes. So the first one I actually got from Kevin G. Anderson. Uh, I, I work on Speculate, the podcast for writers, readers, and fans, along with Greg Wilson and Mike Underwood. And um, Kevin was on our show at one point, and we were talking a little bit about rules. Uh, you know, so as you're beginning to um, get into writing more, more formally, and you start uh, maybe reading up on you know technique. Uh, going to conventions or conferences, uh, attend seminars, you know, that sort of, thing, sort of thing. When you're getting mindful about how you write, you'll, you'll start hearing tons of rules. Uh, and so the, this is kind of a two-edged sword in a way, or, or two ways to look at it. One is don't take anything as, uh, as gospel. Uh, all rules uh, may or may not work for you. Uh, they're really meant, uh, in my mind, to be something that you can try. Uh, and if they work, great. You put them in your toolbox. Uh, and if not, you don't have to use them. Just because something worked for someone else doesn't mean it will work for you. So keep that in mind. Uh, you, you don't have, sometimes we put pressure on ourselves and we start to feel maybe bad or, or a failure just because a particular technique isn't working for you or you know you try to do exactly what another author is doing but it's not working for whatever reason there will be dozens hundreds of reasons why it may not work for you the same way as someone else so don't worry about that stuff um, keep looking keep trying and find the stuff that works for you so the flip side of this argument is don't write off a rule or technique just because someone else uses it or um, just because you don't think it'll work try to be keep your mind open and you can find things that are, are going to work for you in the end. Uh, at the time, we were talking about uh, Kevin, how he he hikes and he dictates uh, as he's hiking, and it really kind of opens up his mind, um, and that works great for him. Uh, and you know, other people like might might like dictation or writing longhand before they type it uh, into the into whatever word processor they're using, that type of thing. It, it doesn't really matter what the technique is. The point here is that you should. Uh, keep your mind open to, to new possibilities and just give it a try. You could write a short story using some technique or uh, maybe a chapter, and, you know, see if it works. And sometimes it will, and awesome, now you have a new tool in your toolbox. And if not, you know, at least you've given it a shot. Okay, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one, as I uh, have been going along, you know, I'm, you know, I've been doing this for 15 plus years at this point, uh, and it's, it's very common for me in, in the writing uh, to sort of lose my way. I mean, life intervenes, right? We start getting off track from what we're trying to do. Um, and the story kind of suffers for it because you're, you're essentially getting pulled out of the story. That's at least one of the problems that can happen. And I've found that um, it's a simple thing to say, and I know it's not so simple as this exactly, but if I can get back to the place uh, the mindset that I had when I came up with the story in the first place, it helps me, helps to ground me in the story and helps me to get back on track. So a couple ways you can do that. I mean, some of the first scenes that you ever thought of uh, or wrote down about the story, you can just kind of revisit them in your, in your mind or actually go read them if they're written down. And that'll sometimes spark some imagination. Um, I also keep a Pinterest board with uh, references of... Um, 
clothing, weapons, uh, other artwork that just inspired me. And as I'm going and searching for those things, they are really revolving around the center, you know, that through line that I'm shooting for in the story. And when I go back to the Pinterest board, it often helps to recenter me and it helps to get the outside world out so I can get back to the, the job that I want to do, which is writing the story. Um, another simple technique I use is to use a playlist uh, with music that is flavored of the time period that I'm trying to write about. So I have, for 12 Kings, I have some music that is uh, Middle Eastern inspired. You know, there's a, a lot of different types of music I have in it, but um, as I keep playing it, uh, at, at first it's new to me, but then as I'm writing, that becomes a touchstone to the creativity and the writing that I had as I was writing along the way. And when I play it again, uh, I might have had a long day, uh, it may have been a few days since I've been, gotten to the story, it does a really good job of snapping me back into the story and in, in, in the place uh, that I want to be. So uh, you can you can give that a try as well. And then um, the last thing I'll mention is uh, regarding sanity to a degree. Uh, it's it's basically to to stop and smell the roses, to enjoy the little things along the way. I think so often we're looking towards the end, uh, and maybe that's an end goal like i want to be a bestseller I, I want to sell this many books i want to support my family via writing um, or even just getting a book done and you're looking towards the end only and if i get this then i will be happy or i will be a success and the trouble is the the march to a single book sometimes a single story uh, much less a career is really long and it's really hard and it's really lonely and we do the stuff by ourselves uh, uh, but for the most part, um, even if you're going out and writing in a coffee shop, you're kind of in your head and it's, it's difficult to share this stuff with, with people. Um, but I, so I found that counting the successes along the way really helps me. I mean, just finishing your goal for the day, finishing a chapter, of course, finishing a, a story or a book, but also, um, things like when you get, uh, positive rejections, you know, it's a rejection. I'm not saying you should be happy about the rejection per se, but if you're noticing a trend, uh, you're getting more uh, rejections that are personalized and close and, and could, you, could you work this and, and try again, um, you know, that's getting you closer and closer and closer um, to, to publication and then towards a successful career. Uh, it, it has really helped me. I've, I've done it from the start because I knew this was going to be a long trek and it is, it has been, it continues to be. Um, and even though I have setbacks along the way, I really try to enjoy the things that are positive. Um, this is certainly one of them, you know, getting to talk to folks who love doing what I do, uh, but tons of others, you know, the, the, the positive acceptances, even in smaller magazines at first and larger magazines, meeting agents, editors, authors, on and on and on. Just, um, you know, keep that in you a little bit uh, because it helps uh, to protect you against the storm. And, and the storm is strong. Uh, this is, again, a lonely business and it, it is hard to get rejected. So just arm yourself a little bit. Um, and it, those things help you feel like you're getting somewhere. Uh, whereas if you're only looking towards the end, you can feel like you're not. Um, and I want you to avoid that. So that's it. Those are my three pieces of advice. I, I wish you all the best in your writing. Your success is my success uh, and, and all of our success. Uh, so um, best of luck. Uh, again, I appreciate all you've done for World Builders. And uh, if you could pass this along and the other videos to your friends, family, tell them about World Builders and we'll keep spreading the news. Thanks everybody. Bye.